the archive field notes are one of the really major contributions that Joseph Grinnell added to the field of scientific natural history and museum science uh, when he became director here. He says that the real value of what we're doing now won't be found and won't be known until a century to come. What we want to do is not only compare our findings today with what Grinnell saw 100 years ago, but establish baselines for repeat surveys at periods of 20-year 20, 20 intervals or something like that for the future, so that if we see changes, we can get a better handle on monitoring the rate of change. About 50% of the mammals have experienced a range shift, and the range shifts are of three kinds. Uh, there are low elevation species that have had their upper elevational ranges expanded upwards by an average of about 1,500 feet. There are high elevation species that have had their lower elevational ranges retracted upwards, again by about an average of 1,500 feet. And then there are a couple of species uh, that have actually gone in the reverse. Uh, there are high elevation things that have expanded downwards, and there's one in particular called the montane shrew. So about half the small mammal fauna has changed its distributional relationships along the gradient. About half hasn't changed at all. So of the species that have shown the, the most dramatic range shifts, uh, the alpine chipmunk is the, one of the high elevation species that has retracted the most. This is a species that has disappeared from Tuolumne Meadows, for example, and it now occurs at about 1,800 feet higher than where it used to occur, and you have to get really up into the high country, uh, almost to 10,000 feet before you find it anymore. It's also an endemic to California. It's California's only endemic mammal, basically. Uh, it's only known from the central and, and southern Sierras. Uh, and so if it continues to march upward, it's going to disappear because it's going to get pushed off the top of the mountain. So it's a species of somewhat of concern. The low elevation species that has expanded its upper range most is a thing called the pinion mouse. It's got huge ears. Uh, it's really obvious uh, when you see it. This is an animal that's expanded all the way up to above 10,000 feet, uh, right to tree line almost in the white bark pine zone. So it has really shifted its both its elevational range and its ecological range. My field notes uh, for this specimen is 9th of October. 8th of October, here we are on the south slope of Williams Butte uh, in Mono County, which is just to the um, just south of Lee Vining. Uh, and I'm describing how I got there and where this locality is. I'm providing a map uh, as to where my uh, trap lines and so forth uh, uh, are. Uh, and I'm providing photographs uh, of the habitat. This is the pinion juniper woodland, uh, which is the characteristic habitat of this animal on the east side. This is one that, uh, that we're working with a lot. This is the lodgepole pine chipmunk because it's one of the species that hasn't shifted its range at all. And so one of the questions is why, is, and it's sympatric at its higher elevational range, uh, with the alpine chipmunk, so they both used to occur in, uh, quite commonly in Tuolumne Meadows, and this is the only one you find there now. So one of the questions to ask is, why has this one not changed? Why has it not experienced any uh, shift while something that it was sympatric with, lived in the same basic habitat with, uh, has shifted enormously? My name is Emily Rubich. I'm a uh fourth year graduate student um, here in the museum and I'm looking at uh, genetic changes in um, two species of chipmunks over time. One of the questions she's asking is has there been a change in, has there been a loss of genetic diversity uh, as a result of these kinds of population retractions? Um, because if they've lost genetic diversity then they've lost to some degree the capacity to adapt and genetically over the long run um, and so that's, she's, um, that's another value of, this, of having the specimens because she's able to extract DNA from the uh, museum skins of the Grinnell era and actually determine what the pattern and levels of genetic diversity were uh, 100 years ago and match that to what uh, we observe today. 
what we've done is go back has gone back and uh, and uh, digitized all the original field notes and they're now all online so if somebody wants to go read what Joseph Grinnell was actually thinking about on a particular day when he was out in the field you can go to his notes and uh, and uh, read that July 25th 1915 Sunday the Lord hath sent us a wolverine in the setting of number three steel traps Ferris and I set out on the 19th on top of a ridge between McClure Fork and Lyle Fork at 11,000 feet. The animal was found this morning, was caught by all three traps, struggled, uttered no sound but occasional grunts, struggled violently and bit the stock off the gun 